Hello and welcome back. In this tutorial video, we will learn about multidimensional array in Python using nested list with some examples along with in-depth explanations. So let's get started. Before we dive into details of video, I just want to emphasize that Python has many different data types, including lists. However, as you can see, there are no exclusive array object or data types in Python. But since a list can have elements of any data type, including another list, we can effectively create a list of lists and use it to perform all the operations of an array. This basic principle can be applied over and over to create a nested list or a multidimensional list or multidimensional array. We can also use NumPy or other module to perform operations involving multidimensional array, but we won't cover that in this video. Now, if you want to learn about basics of list manipulation in Python, click on the link at the top right of your screen or in the description section down below. One more thing before we begin, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more contents like this. Now let's understand multidimensional array in Python with some illustrations. Let's start with something simple. Here I have a bunch of data, which could be integer, string, or any value. In this case, I have letters A through L. This is a linear data structure with 12 values, whose index starts from 0 and ends at 11. If we write them in a list format, the length of the list will be 12. So this is just a list of 12 elements representing a series of data. And as you can see, our list in this example has one row and 12 columns. Now let's take the same list of 12 elements representing same data that we had. If we are to divide the elements into groups of four and form a list out of each group, we will end up with three lists nested inside an outer list. The index value of the inner list will be zero, one, and two respectively, and therefore the length of our list is three. Note that each inner list has four elements with index values from zero to three. Pay close attention to the index values 0, 1, and 2 that are used to access individual elements of the outer list. In other words, they represent the indexes of the inner lists. We can think of this nested list as a layer of lists, with the index value of 0, 1, and 2 identifying individual lists in the layer, and second index value 0, 1, 2, and 3 identifying elements within each of the lists. Sometimes it's easier if we think of this nested list as x and y dimensions, or rows and columns, therefore multidimensional array. Our outer list in this example has three rows and four columns. The new structure still has the same data that we had in previous one-dimensional list, but now we have morphed that information into a two-dimensional list. If there is one thing that I want you to take away from this illustration, it would be that we now need two indexes to access every piece of data in this structure. The first index identifies the row of, this, of the two-dimensional list, which basically is identifying the inner list. And the second index identifies the column of the two-dimensional list, which is identifying a single element within the inner list. For example, if we need to access element D from this list, which is here, we will provide 0 and 3 as row and column respectively. Similarly, if we need to access element K, we will provide 2 and 2 as row and columns respectively. If we repeat the same basic principle of nested list one more time, we get a three-dimensional array with rows, columns, and depth. Now, because there are three dimensions, we would need three indexes to access every piece of data in this structure. This same basic principle can be applied over and over to create an array of any dimensions. With this explanation, let's move over to PyCharm, write some code, and that will help you understand in depth of multidimensional arrays. Let's start with something very simple. Here I have the one dimensional list. Now, if we modify this to say, uh, I have a list uh, separated by comma instead of elements separated by comma, which essentially is um, the elements are list themselves here. And if I enclose everything in square bracket, something like this, now I have a list here, which have a first element as a list and the second element also as a list. And each of these inner lists have three elements the two lists are separated by comma. So when I, when I print this, it will give me a, a full list with two elements. Each element have three nested elements within them. So it's essentially a nested list here, which is a two dimensional list. Python also allows us to input this uh, nested list in a, in a different way. So in this case, this is our first element of the list, comma, and second element of the list. And the square bracket is there to enclose everything. It's, it's still the same 
list that we had previously and when we run this we get the same output because it's exactly the same list we're just writing it so that it's easier to read this is basically how we create two-dimensional list and it's the same logic we use also to create three-dimensional list all we have to do is put another list inside this uh, list there we go to put that correctly we have to include this into another set of square brackets and then when we run this, we get this output. So let's say I have this nested list as my original, my list, and to access individual element, let's say I want to access this value four, which is in the second inner list and the second element of it. So I would have to provide two index values. And the first index value would identify the row. So it's, a, it's in the second row. That means index value of one. And in the second row, it is in the second column. So another index value of one. When I print this, that would give me the four, which is this element. Now all this is manual creation and manipulation or accessing individual element within the nested list. What if we want to write a program that does all this for us? So for that we need a nested for loop. To show this I want to create a two-dimensional array creating uh, different data points in a space. So let's say I have two-dimensional x and y space and in that space I want to create multiple data points. Each data value will have x and y value in that space. And then later on I want to use that information or x and y value of each data points to calculate distance from a reference point. Create a, a variable called number of points and let's say one for this example and we can come back and later and change this. So a reference point and this would be a list of x and y value Let's just say for now the reference point is center with x and y both equal to zero. When I am to create multiple points, we can create a, that with nested for loop. And we can do that with for every point in range of num points, new point equals. Now I'll create a list here and that would be x and y values in this. And I want them to be random integer between let's say zero and nine. That would be my x value. And then I would repeat that same thing for my y value. And there's a warning here because I need to import that. So from random import randint, and that should take care of that. And in the next line, I'll append that to an empty list. Let's say my empty list is all points and I need to define all points before that. So here I can do all points equals an empty list. For every iteration of this for loop, I will append to all list. And what I will append is this new data point. So this essentially creates a new data point for every iteration and appends that to the all points. Now I can simply print all points and now it's randomly creating a list of lists and in the inner list we have a data point two and three. So that's our data point for a single point that we entered here. And we run it again, we, do, we get different result. Now obviously we can change this to, let's say I need five data points total. And when I run this, I'll get a list of five lists and each list has x and y values or basically data points this is a creation of empty list and using a for loop to append that into empty list we can alternately do this using a list computations and for that i would so let's just say all point equals to so inside that list i will perform this step for every point in range this so that's how i basically write the same thing and that would be list comprehensions so let's comment this for now and just use this so let's go back to one point and run this and it gives me five three run it again it gives me a new point now let's say i need total of 10 points i'll get 10 points when you see the output here is giving us the output in a single line although we said this is a two-dimensional array now we can print each individual item in a separate line and how we can do that is just by tweaking this into a for loop so for each point in all points i'll i'll just print the point here and let's see so in this case i'm getting random x and y values for each iteration the iteration being equal to number of points so basically we can now see that this is a two-dimensional array although in the previous example all these were printed in a single line and it was harder to understand now it's easier to understand that there are 10 rows and each row has two columns making this a two-dimensional array and we can repeat this this bit of code and just add any additional information here and create a, another dimension to this and create a three-dimensional area basically but for now we'll keep we'll work in in this particular example reduce the size of this and and next i will show you how to how we can access this two-dimensional area or elements within it and calculate distance between each of these point and the reference point which is the center <laughs> 
to access individual elements within a nested list or multidimensional array, yeah. there are multiple ways to do this. I'll show two different methods and both are using for loop. Let me get rid of that comment section. I'll just keep the list comprehension part. The first method would be using items in the array to loop through the two-dimensional array. The second method would be using, I would use range function. And like I said, both methods are using for loops. So we can start with for, and in this case, uh, since I'm taking individual items from the array, which basically are list itself, and the list consists of x and y value as my point. So let's say, let's say for point in all points, I want to calculate the distance from that point to this reference point, which is basically zero, zero now. So for our ease, let's just reduce our point size to and calculate the, uh, the distance for that single point, And then we can change back to whatever size we want. So we'll say distance equals to so the distance is x1 minus x2 and x is basically the first element of this x1 index 0 minus x2 and that x2 is the first element of this current point so index 0 of that and we have to take the square root we'll do the similar thing for y value so we can just copy that and instead of index 0 we'll take index 1 this time so x1 minus x2 whole square plus y1 minus y2 whole square. And then we have to take the square root of everything. So the square root basically means to the power of 0 0.5. And we need an opening bracket here as well. That should basically be the formula to calculate distance between the two points given x and y values of each of those points. I would like to print that the distance and see whether our formula has been correct or not. And just to check that point, I'm gonna manually assign a value for all point here with a single data. And in this case, I will have three and four as my single data point. Then the distance should be equal to 5.0. When I run this, it would give us the output. We get an error here and it's pointing to line number seven. So, okay, we forgot the equal to sign here to assign it. Let's run it again and we get 5.0. So that just tells me that this distance formula that we applied is correct. With that, now we can revert back to our original all points based on the number of points here. And let's run it again before we change the number of points. Now we get random X and Y value and then the distance based on that random value. Change it back to five and we'll get five different random points and then there are individual distance to the reference points. Now, another way to do this would also use a for loop. Instead of using the points as a value, I'll, I'll just use a range function to loop through different items. So let's say item in range. Now, since we know the number of points, we can just use that data in this for loop and create a for loop like that. And then we use the same distance formula here basically but we'll just have to update the information in that we will now need two different index values for the reference point there is only x and y value is still good enough but since we are not using points and rather using items that means we basically now need to add additional index value here because when we use point that already gave us the first item of that list which was given by the first index value effectively what that means is when we are not using points to loop through now we need to incorporate the x and y values or the rows and columns of the nested list so the rows is given by the item itself because we're looping through the item that goes from zero to the number of points our, oh, sorry, this would be all points. Let's just run it again and, and it's easier to show you that way. So I have five points here. Three and four is the first point. And what this basically is, is taking is zero from the reference point and all point item zero, which is this list. And I'm taking first index of that. So I'm taking three value from that. So I'm looking at nested list, taking the first item, which is the first element of that nested list, and then taking the first index of within that, which is the X value of that first point. And I'll have to update this with the Y value as well. So I'll do something similar and just instead of item here, I would say all points item zero and all points item one. And also print the distance here. I will still keep this and also use this and show you the outputs side by side. So these are my five points. So this was the first output from the first for loop. And then th these are the outputs from the second for loop. And in both the cases, we are using two different formats to make our for loop. The second for loop instance, we are, we are using two different index values to iterate using a range function. And in, in both cases, we are giving, we are getting same results using similar distance formulas. These are some ways we, we can access two dimensional arrays. I think that is all for this video. Hope you learned something new today. 
If you are still confused with uh, working with two dimensional or multi dimensional arrays, please ask questions and I'm, I'll be happy to answer your questions. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos like this. Thank you.